Good morning. Thank you for joining us for 9-11, 20 years later, Our Community Remembers. My name is Tom Brady, and I'm the Associate Dean for the Public Services Division and the Director of the Homeland Security Training Institute at College of DuPage. At this point, if you could please stand while the DuPage County Sheriff's Honor Guard presents the colors, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Post the colors. Honor Guard, attention. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arms. Yes, face. Forward, march. Please be seated. Again, good morning. And I'd like to welcome our audience in the Staff Sergeant Robert J. Miller Homeland Security Education Center, which includes the Suburban Law Enforcement Academy SLEA class, BA 2201, community members, and those who are watching live on Facebook. I'd also like to take this moment to introduce our provost who's joining us today. Dr. Mark Curtis Chavez is with us. <laughs> today we'll take time to reflect on September 11, 2001 and how the events of that day changed our way of life. 19 hijackers and four planes took the lives of 2,996 people that day in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Those numbers included 344 firefighters, 72 law enforcement officers, and 55 military personnel. You may have seen that on the north side of this building that we're in right now, we have an American flag planted for every person killed in the attacks on 9-11-01. We're also honored and proud of the relic that the college received in 2011, the World Trade Center I-Beam, which is right outside the doors of this auditorium. We're the only community college in the state of Illinois with a beam from the World Trade Center towers. The 1,000 pound, 10 foot long beam is a source of inspiration and motivation within this building for students seeking degrees for the faculty and staff to do what they do each and every day, and for the next generation of first responders who train here for the future. At the end of today's ceremony, we'll participate in a white rose ceremony where those that are in attendance can lay a rose on the I-beam right outside the doors. And again, be able to remember and reflect on those lives lost on 9-11. Our first presenter that I want to introduce today is Dr. Michael Fagel. 
Dr. Fagel's public safety career includes law enforcement, fire rescue, emergency medical services, emergency management, and occupational safety and health. He has served the US Department of Justice and Department of Defense in various capacities, including building a FEMA organization from the ground up in the Middle East. He was a reservist for FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security responding to such events as the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, the World Trade Center attacks in 2001, and Hurricane Sandy in New York in 2012. As a Homeland Security subject matter expert, Mike joined the College of DuPage in 2014 to assist in our Homeland Security training program. He's also an instructor at several universities, including Northern Illinois University, the Illinois Institute of Technology, Louisiana State University, Eastern Kentucky University, and Aurora University. Please welcome Dr. Mike Fagel. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here, and thank you all for doing what you're going to do in your careers. Saturday, September 11th, 2021. How far have we come in 20 years? That day changed the world, changed our lives forever. As I stand with you today, I'm humbled from what I see. You are our future. Thank you. I served at Ground Zero for 100 days, and it's like yesterday. This morning as I was driving in, I spent half an hour on the phone with the fire chief that I worked for at Ground Zero. It was the most unique thing I've ever seen in my life working there, and we must never forget that fateful day. Each of our families and your family's lives will be changed by what you do and what we do. When you take on these careers, it's not just yourself, but it's your families that join with you. I served alongside of people who lost brothers and fathers and sisters, kids. It was horrific. I sat next to Fire Chief Joe Pfeiffer for 10 days at the command post, not knowing that his brother Kevin had perished from Ladder 7. I recall a gentleman standing outside one of our command post trailers every single day. And that was retired Captain Charlie Vigari, who said, find my sons. His sons were, one was a police officer, one was a firefighter. And he maintained his vigil outside our command post for over 75 days. The hollow look in their eyes, the sadness, was immeasurable. It, it was forlorn, and it was something I will never forget. We today cannot forget those that came before us and those that will come after us, because that's our responsibility. Ten years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer from ground zero. I had lost lung function and other things, but I will tell you, Knock on wood, I'm still here. I will be here as long as I can be. <clears throat> it's a privilege to serve because all of us in this room serve. We are not able to do anything else but serve, and that's critical. Let's leave this place a better place for our children, our families, our grandkids, our neighbors. <clears throat> Let's do good things and remember, take care of each other, <clears throat> excuse me, and America lives in us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fagel. I wanted to talk briefly about my recollections of 9-11. You know, as many of you know, I was in federal law enforcement at the time. And I remember, I was thinking about this today, because when I looked outside, I, 20 years ago today is very vivid. I remember it very vividly. It's almost exactly like it looks today. I looked up at the sky this morning, and I said, there's not a, a cloud in the sky. I mean, it was beautiful. It was exactly that way 20 years ago today on a Tuesday. 
And I got up about 5.30 in the morning and I was driving to Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. I had, a, I had a, a plane to catch with my boss from Dallas-Fort Worth to Oklahoma City. And as I was driving, I thought to myself, you know, sometimes if you travel, you look at the, what the weather is going to be, how, it, how it's going to, you know. And I said, I remember driving to the airport thinking, well, this would be a good day to fly. Um, got to the airport, met my boss. Our plane left. It's only about a little more than an hour flight from Dallas-Fort Worth to Oklahoma City, if you ever made that trip. But I, was, uh, I met my boss. We were having coffee, talking. The reason we were going there is we had meetings with our staff in Oklahoma City because one of the inspectors was, was retiring that day for a luncheon. So we, we got on the plane at 7.30 a.m. That's what time our plane took off, actually. 7.30, we took off, uneventful flight, you know, uh, landed at uh, Wool Rogers World Airport in Oklahoma City, turned on my phone, I had 10 messages. Very unusual, I, f I used to fly all the time. Very unusual. So I started listening to my messages and there was frantic calls from my wife, there was work calls, there was a lot of people trying to get in touch with me. And I didn't know anything that had happened. Because by the time we landed at about 8.40 and got off the plane, everything had happened in New York City and in Washington, D.C. So I remember getting off the plane with my boss and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And I saw the people running around the airport frantic, just frantic. They were just looking for, they were all standing looking at TVs. The TVs were at the airport. I, I didn't, they didn't tell us on the airplane anything had happened. Got off, um, started piecing it together. Somebody said, my wife had called and said, it looks like a plane had hit the World Trade Tower. Uh, it could have been an accident, was the first call. Then it said, it looks like it's deliberate, the second call. So I just didn't have enough information. But as I wandered around the airport, I saw faces of sheer terror on people. People were frantically looking for information on their phones, and they were just trying to get as much information as they could. It, it took a while to sink in what happened. We went to the, to the office and did our, did our duty that day. And then we had to drive back to DFW that night. So took a government car, and we had to drive back. Everything was closed, as you know. We got to, the, uh, we got to DFW about 11.30 that night, driving back from Oklahoma City. And I can, I'll never forget being at DFW Airport and not hearing a sound. Nothing, no airplanes, no people, no traffic, nothing. It was unbelievably just completely silent. And I had never heard that at the airport before. So it was very surreal to me. It was like a, you were in a, like a dream, you know? So I remember getting in my car. The place was still, the parking lots were still packed with people that had left that day to go to, uh, to go to their, whatever they were traveling or if they were on vacation or whatever. All the cars were still there. Got in my car, drove back home. Um, got home in the early morning hours of September 12th. It was probably about you know one o'clock in the morning. Saw my wife and my daughter, and it's really sunk into me then that how difficult and how things changed for me in one hour. So at 7:30 a.m., it was a happy, bright, beautiful day. At 8.30, an hour later, the world had completely changed. And not just changed for that day, and not just changed for me. It changed for us and forever. So it's a real time stamp for me when, uh, when it finally set in. And it took a while to set in um, because everybody felt the same way. No one really kind of knew what was going on until we all started piecing this together and understood that you know, America was under attack. And we had never experienced anything like that before. And the important thing today is whatever your experience was, or if you weren't alive and didn't have an experience on 9-11, you never forget it. And that's why all those flags are out there, because we want to make sure that we never forget those who lost their lives on 9-11. On so one of the things that we do is we always have a moment of silence at 7.46 a.m. every year. 7.46 is significant because it's the exact moment that the first plane hit the north tower of the World Trade Centers in New York. 
So we always want to uh, take some time to remember those whose lives were changed and whose uh, lives were lost on 9-11. So please join me now at 746 in a moment of silence. Thank you. Our next presenter is Assistant Fire Chief of the Glen Ellen Volunteer Fire Department, Jim Sisson. Jim has a unique combination of positions. He is Second Assistant Chief with the Glen Ellen Vo Volunteer Fire Department and a 787 International Captain with American Airlines. At 18, he joined Carroll Stream as a paid per call firefighter but eventually left to finish college. Jim later was hired by American Airlines in 1985 and having a schedule with many days off, approached Chief Stuart Stone of Glen Ellen about joining the fire company. He began as a probationary member and was promoted to assistant fire chief in February of 2015. Jim completed the first firefighter two class presented by College of DuPage and eventually became certified as a Fire Officer 2, Instructor 2, and Fire Apparatus Engineer. He also became a paramedic and was licensed for 20 years. Please welcome Assistant Chief Sisson. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, so, as I said, uh, not only am I a fire chief, but I'm also a pilot with American Airlines. And so it kind of doubly hit me on that morning. On the night of September 10th, the night before, I went to bed and the biggest concern that I had was that I had an FAA exam the next morning. I was in the process of going through 737 training and that was the most important thing, <laughs> excuse me, most important thing for me. But the next day, everything would change. Just prior to starting the exam, the examiner came into the room and advised us that we would have to postpone the training because an airplane had flown into the World Trade Center. I wasn't sure I heard him correctly, so I asked my exam partner who confirmed what I had heard. As word spread through the uh, training facility, people started coming out of the classrooms into the hallways and everybody was confirming exactly what we had heard. We eventually migrated to the break room that had a TV, and we watched the events unfold, including United Flight 175 slamming into the second tower. I couldn't understand someone purposely flying a load of plane, a load of people into a building. Uh, the, world, the word came down that all air traffic had uh, been grounded at that point. Not knowing what was going to happen as far as continuing training, I considered getting back into my car, driving back home, grabbing my gear, and heading to New York to help with the dig. But as it turned out, training continued in the simulators, but with flight training would be suspended indefinitely, so I stayed in Texas. As the skies began to reopen, there was apprehension among crew members. Some never returned to flying. Those of us that did relied mostly on each other with assurances that we were all working together to bring normalcy back. However, normalcy that would return was nothing like the innocent time before that Tuesday morning. The support we received from the general public, both in the aviation world and in the fire service, was greatly appreciated and made coming back somewhat easier. The cohesion that occurred in this country is something I had never seen before but sadly, have not seen since. It's been 20 years since the attack. Today, I still look around the gate area as I get on an airplane, looking for anything that looks out of place. I'm not paranoid, but I have learned to trust my gut feeling that if something appears out of place, it must be questioned. As the old saying goes, trust but verify. We continue to get reports of what appear to be dry runs. Is the disturbance in the back with the passengers because of too much alcohol 
or mental issues or distraction to test how our crew members will react? Or are they trying to flush out the FAMs? What we learned leading up to 9-11 is that those who would do us harm are very patient and will wait for the right time to attack again. We cannot let our guard down even for a minute. All it takes for them is one chance to do it again. Always be aware of your surroundings. The things I've seen and experienced over my years in the fire service have taught me that life can change in an instant. In one single moment, life may never be the same. So kiss your loved ones, snuggle a little tighter, and never take one second of your life for granted. God bless the innocent people that perished that day and those that we continue to lose due to its aftermath. And may we never forget the events of that tragic day. And may we always remain vigilant to prevent it from happening again. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Chief Sisson. Our next presenter is DuPage County Sheriff James Mendrick. Sheriff Mendrick brings experience, knowledge, and expertise to the DuPage County Sheriff's Office from his 24 years of serving the citizens of DuPage County. Hired in 1996 as a patrol deputy, Mendrick rose through the ranks of corporal, sergeant, lieutenant, major, and administrative chief before being elected sheriff in November of 2018. Shortly after taking office, Sheriff Mendrick doubled all rehabilitation services before partnering with the DuPage County Health Department to institute medication-assisted treatment for inmates fighting opioid and other addictions. In addition, in less than a year, nearly 10% of the correctional facility population graduated from one of the sheriff's workforce inmate job training programs. Sheriff Mendrick has fostered a new culture of hope and purpose and has shifted the focus to the improvement and well-being of the citizenry. Please welcome Sheriff Jim Mendrick. Thank you. It is great to see a new generation of law enforcement in front of us. You are our future. As we commemorate the 20th anniversary of the tragedy of 9-11, we need to reflect on why we're here. <clears throat> On September 11, 2001, 19 militants associated with the Islamic extremist group of Al-Qaeda hijacked four airplanes and carried out suicide attacks against targets in the United States. At that time, I was a midnight's patrolman. I had been asleep for about an hour when my wife burst into our bedroom yelling, they're killing us. I got out of bed just in time to see the second plane strike. Seems so unbelievable, so absolutely impossible. As a policeman, there's no worse feeling that you can have than helplessness. Watching people jump from buildings so they could live just a little bit longer, a few seconds more, because of what had just happened, and there's nothing you can do about it. It was one of the worst emotions that I've ever felt in my life. Within minutes of witnessing this complete anarchy, my phone began to ring. It was a sheriff's office dispatch placing me on standby for potential, potential terrorist attacks out here in DuPage County. At that time, it looked like the whole world was about to unravel. Everything appeared to be devolving into chaos. No one felt safe. Everybody was panicked. When something like this happens, when it first happens, nobody knows how far it's going to go, how it's going to end, if we're going to be the same. It was now wartime. We had to step up. We had to change our entire law enforcement tactics and culture. We had to prepare for terrorism and large-scale attacks and events. You know, a total of 2,751 people were killed instantly in the initial 9-11 attacks. Citizens of over 90 countries died after the two planes slammed into the Twin Towers. That figure includes 344 firefighters, paramedics, 71 police officers from New York and the Port Authority, all of whom were struggling to complete an evacuations of the buildings and save the office workers trapped on the higher floors. They are true heroes. Many more died in the years after due to exposures of smoke, dust, harmful carcinogens, bringing the death toll up to 2,996. Police and firefighters gave their lives 
in defense of others as they still do every single day. We've banded together, we've hardened our soft targets, we've strengthened our agencies and our infrastructure. No matter what, we accomplish our mission. We keep the populace safe. We live in tumultuous times where sometimes even public safety itself falls under attack. And that's when support for our officers means the very most. The next time you run out into a policeman out there doing their job, please just thank them for their service. A simple thing like that, you have no idea the impact that has on the men and women in blue. The simplest kind gestures towards police generate a culture that will do anything to help those around them. I believe that we do have that support out here in DuPage County, and we have not forgotten. We will keep secure the American treasure of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We will never forget our fallen heroes who died protecting us. And we will always honor those who put that uniform on every day, willing to make the ultimate sacrifice to protect those in need. Thank you for your courage, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Sheriff Mendrick. So before we conclude this ceremony this morning, I want to introduce Ms. Wendy Parks, who has a special announcement. Wendy serves as the Vice President of Public Relations, Marketing, and Communications at College of DuPage. She holds an MBA from Loyola University and has held several leadership roles in marketing and communications within private and public organizations, including Johnson Publishing Company, the University of Chicago, and the Chicago Housing Authority. Additionally, Wendy believes in giving back to her community and is a board liaison to the Glen Ellen Chamber of Commerce. Since joining the college, Wendy has led the division in earning multiple international and national awards for her team's outstanding work. She has also spearheaded executive communications for the Office of the President and a wide array of other key stakeholders. At this time, please join me in welcoming Wendy Parks. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for being here today on this very special occasion. As we look back on those who have sacrificed their lives, worked very hard to get this country where it is today, it is equally important to pause and also reflect on our future. On behalf of President Dr. Brian Caputo, Associate Dean Tom Brady, and the Marketing and Communications Division, my cabinet colleagues here today, Walter Johnson, Vice President, and also Dr. Mark Curtis Chavez, I am delighted to announce that College of DuPage will offer two scholarships to two students at College of DuPage who are laser focused on becoming first responders. This is the first scholarship from this division that we are so proud to announce today. Thank you. At College of DuPage, we wholeheartedly believe in the power of education, and we are here to support our students. This is your community college. As Dr. Martin Luther King once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much for your time, and God bless you all. Thank you, Wendy. That is really very exciting news. Thank you so much for that. So as we conclude our 9-11 memorial, I ask those that are here in attendance, attendance to join us for a white rose ceremony. At the conclusion of the service, We'll file out of the east doors 
and take a white rose that you are welcome to place on the 9-11 I-beam and reflect on those who we lost as our community remembers. I also need to thank those that worked tirelessly to make this event happen. Dr. Brian Caputo, president of College of DuPage, the College of DuPage Board of Trustees, Wendy Parks, vice president of public relations, marketing, and communications, Jennifer Duda, senior news bureau and communication manager, Amy Fries, project assistant, Angela Menneke, media relations specialist, Joan DePiro, community engagement specialist, Brian Kleeman, senior writer and editor, Mark Brady, graphic and web designer, our wonderful multimedia department and conference and event staff, and Don Inman, Dirk Hyde, and the ground staff. Please join me in giving them a round of applause for all their work. Now, if you would, please stand for the retrieval of the colors by the DuPage County Sheriff's Honor Guard and follow us out the east side doors as we participate in the rose ceremony. Thank you, stay safe, and never forget. Class, stand by. Class, attention. Forward. 